Yeah, hi. Welcome to Civils Online, your affordable personal coach. Uh, this is part of Civils Exam Informative Series. And today we are discussing about Siachen Glacier, the highest battlefield in the world. Siachen Glacier. So before knowing about Siachen Glacier, uh, let's study about uh, glaciers. Uh, that is from a geography perspective. What are glaciers and what is what is their importance? and how the glaciers are the major source of uh, rivers in India. What is the impact of climate change on glaciers? So what is a glacier? Um, glacier is nothing but a river, but it's a river of, not of water, but it is a river of ice. So it's a persistent body of dense ice that is constantly moving under its own weight because ice will have a lot of weight. So it forms when the accumulation of snow exceeds its melting and sublimation and it happens over many years, uh, sometimes take, taking you know centuries together. Uh, glaciers slowly flow uh, due to stresses induced in their own weight, creating certain distinguishing landforms and certain features. And also it will abrade the rock and debris from their substrate to create landforms such as the cirques and moraines and the glaciers will will be formed only on land and not on uh, sea like sea ice that will be formed on the sea um, so what is their importance uh, in india also there are many glaciers in himalayan region and most uh, most glaciers lie in the states of jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh and uttarakhand and few of them are in uh, sikkim also um, so so for India, uh, it is important uh, because many of the major uh, Himalayan rivers are originating in these glaciers only. So uh, when looking at NCRT textbook, uh, there is information given about glaciers. So here we can see, uh, you know, the diagram of the glacier is given. So basically on an earth surface, two types of forces will act. These are called exogenic and endogenic forces. Endogenic forces act within the surface of the earth and these are the forces which form uh, certain, uh, so certain features of the earth. The exogenic forces will act upon the surface of the earth and will change it into uh, different landforms and features. So there are certain exogenic forces such as water, wind and glaciers is also one of them. So glaciers, which is a river of ice, will form certain landforms on the surface of the earth. So uh, as I said, it's a mass of ice moving a sheet over the land. So here one diagram of a glacier is given. You can see the glacier in its uh, valley flowing. And it is very slow. As I said, it, it flows only a few meters or a centimeters per day or per year in india there are many uh, glaciers as we discussed and the largest river and most respected river in india the ganges the ganga is actually uh, is born at uh, a glacier called gangotri so all these famous pilgrimage sites like gangotri and yamanotri are actually glaciers these are the birthplaces of the important rivers of india um, erosion by glaciers is tremendous because of the friction and the sheer weight of the ice. So these, uh, you know, flow of these glaciers will pluck the materials from the land. Um, yes. So glaciers will generally form two types of landforms. One is erosional landform. The other one is depositional. So erosion, uh, as we know, it is, you know, eroding the material and forming some kind of landform. Depositional is, uh, it will deposit those material at uh, at particular place and form different kinds of landforms. These are called depositional. When we look at erosional landforms, uh, one landform is called cirques. Cirques are, uh, you know, you can see the, in the diagram, you can see, these are like tree branches. Uh, these are the, whenever you see mountainous areas which are clad with snow, the main uh, features you will see are these the tree branches kind of features called cirques. Uh, these are formed by the flowing glaciers. These are, uh, uh, you know, concave, concave kind of uh, physical features. 
Sometimes water may get filled into these cirques and lakes can be formed. These lakes are called cirque or tarn lakes. And there are other features called as horns and serrated ridges. Horns, when the you know headward erosion uh, along the cirque walls, it forms horns. So uh, the, the prominent example of horns is, you know, these are the peaks, mountain peaks. The famous mountain peak Everest, which is highest peak in the world, is actually a kind of horn formed by the erosional activity of the glaciers. And then you have other types of uh, erosional features, glacial valleys and troughs. These are the valleys formed by the glacier. Um, and where, you know, glacial, gray glacier will deposit its uh, debris. And then you have uh, depositional landforms. As I said, these uns uns unassorted cores and fine debris that is transported by these glaciers is dropped dropped somewhere on the platform so these are called glacial till this is different from alluvium uh, in the river valleys normal river valleys formed by water so alluvium uh, is actually fine fine uh, clay and other minerals will be dissolved into it but the till the glacial till which is deposited by glacier is a kind of coarse stones and rocks will be there and uh, then uh, another important depositional landform is moraine. So this glacial till deposited uh, in a long time and it will form some kind of physical features, ridges. So this is called moraine. So there are different types of moraine based on the deposition and shape. These are called later lateral moraines, etc. And we can see actually in the diagram uh, different depositional landforms formed by the glacier like Esker, Outwash Plain. Uh, one type of moraine called terminal moraine, drumlins, outwash plain, etc. So apart from moraine, other type of uh, uh, landforms are like esker, and you have uh, outwash outwash plains as well, and drumlins as well. These are the different depositional features found by glaciers. Uh, so geographically uh, glaciers are very much important because uh, these are the you know forces which transform the earth so these glaciers are actually uh, very sensitive to climate change so uh, the glaciers act as indicators of impact of the climate change um, so and siachen glacier uh, this is a diagram uh, of siachen glacier map is given here in the light color you can see the territory controlled by India, the Jammu and Kashmir. And in yellow, you have Aksai Chin, which is controlled by China. And you have Northern areas and Ajad Kashmir, which is controlled by Pakistan. And you can see Siachen Glacier here, which is very strategic location in between these conflict zones. So for this reason, India, uh, you know, controls militarily this Siachen Glacier with a lot of effort and personnel. So, uh, this Siachen Glacier is situated in Karakoram Range and this is situated where India's, India and Pakistan's line of control ends. So, from here the, the border is ambiguous. There is a lot of uh, no alternative claims by India and Pakistan over this region. Yeah, coming to uh, the, the event happened in February 2016, the unfortunate event. An avalanche at this Siachen Glacier hits Indian Army post, burying 10 soldiers. Uh, in this unfortunate event, uh, the soldiers were buried under feet of snow. And uh, immediately, Indian Army started rescue operations, uh, uh, despite the you know harsh weather at uh, Siachen Glacier. After a few days of rescue operations, government announced that uh, all the soldiers are died. Uh, fighting the extreme uh, climatic conditions there and the country mounts their sacrifice uh, but after six days uh, the rescue operations were still on and one soldier mirac miraculously found alive by the army rescue team and he's uh, he was quickly moved to army hospital but there you know he uh, died uh, with multiple organ failure but the nation uh, you know, uh, mound 
the sacrifice of all these soldiers and particularly this particular soldier who is alive his name is hanuman tappa along with prime minister whole country uh, praised the praised the indomitable spirit of this soldier so uh, so we want to look you know what happens to human body under such kind of extreme uh, cold uh, they say it's not the enemy at the border uh, which which is a threat to your life but in such kind of harsh climate it's the nature nature is the enemy it's the enemy within so what happens in such kind of extreme conditions so uh, generally there are some incidents in the past where uh, people were buried in ice and they were able to survive for at least 9 hours but uh, for hanuman tapas case he was buried under ice several feet of sheets of ice at a temperature of minus 45 degrees c uh, that too for 5 days so there might be some kind of air pockets formed generally it happens in, in the case of ice avalanches so there might be some air pockets in between these ice sheets which will be uh, provide some uh, oxygen supply to the persons buried uh, so what happens to the human body the first thing that happens is uh, loss of heat uh, that is called hypothermia Uh, the temperature is very much required for body to function then frostbite happens that is gangrenes will be formed in your hands and feet uh, sometimes this this has to be amputated uh, to save the person uh, so it happens mainly in hands and feet because you have less fat in the hands and feet and pneumonia fluid in the lungs can happen kidney failure heart problems and inflammation of the pancreas can happen hypoxia happens uh, because of the lack of adequate air so lack of lack, lack of oxygen in the tissues the body may turn into blue color so this is the science point of view what happens to the human body under extreme conditions so after this unfortunate event we you know there are a lot of debates about can chn be demilitarized why it has to be continuously militarized and monitored uh, what is the strategic importance of uh, chn glacier how india has been protecting this chn glacier and what is the military history of this region and what is a possible future protecting the lives of our soldiers and saving the public ex public money in the expenditure logistically that is being given to these uh, siachen operations uh, so discussing about the siachen glacier and its strategic importance it is a disputed region between india and pakistan and india controls uh, militarily this region uh, india says that it is a cartographic error in the agreement that is made with pakistan on the delineation of this particular region so the 1949 karachi agreement only carefully delineated the line of separation to the point called nj9842 after which it is completely uninhabited region no man's region so the agreement states that the line of separation would continue tends north to the glaciers so in the glaciers uh, maybe at the time uh, the leaders thought it's not required to define beyond this point because it's an completely unpopulated region and india stance is that um, it has to take the global north direction and siachen glacier will fall into india's territory but uh, what pakistan claims is different uh, and strategically also the siachen glacier uh, is just south of the drainage divide uh, that separates eurasian uh, plate and in, in south indian uh, plate and even 1972 simla agreement made no changes to 1949 line of control uh, details uh, for pakistan this is also not only strategically but also geographically also this is important even for india as well because Uh, there are two rivers that are originating in this siachen glacier uh, the nubra river and the shok river and the shok river in turn joins the indus river that is sindhu river which is traveling 3000 kilometers uh, to 
meet the arabian sea in pakistan so it feeds lakhs of people in pakistan and as well as in india so this is geographically also very important for the both countries pakistan and india and apart from that uh, you know strategic uh, for this reason both the countries are actually fighting and india has complete control over it and the army people who has been working there and uh, many people lost their lives they claim that you know india has india should continue continue militarizing this region because already we have lost so many lives there so uh, what could be the future what could be the future what could be uh, you know future of this uh, region so different thinkers scientists environmentalists feel that the siachen region should be gradually demilitarized and made into a peace park a, a scientific park so environmentalists say the ecosystem of any glacier and particularly siachen glacier is very sensitive and it is being disturbed by the ongoing climate change as well as the military presence lot of garbage is being dumped into this region so and also the scientists say this has to be uh, taken as a uh, you know region for international cooperation and scientific research like glaciology climate change etc uh, so we hope that you know india and pakistan will move towards uh, this kind of a initiative the siachen can be uh, strategically demilitarized and changed into a peace park for scientific uh, research for the welfare of mankind and uh, in in that way we will be protecting our valuable soldiers lives as well so this is the picture of siachen glacier a satellite view siachen for peace thank you this is civils online happy learning